Hey everybody, welcome to the video. Today we'll be going over how to get Platinum in the Guardian Games competitive playlist when you're doing Matchmate, or even if you have um, somebody that you want to run with and maybe you don't have a third, and you have to go into the Matchmate playlist to get a third. Uh, it also applies as well if you happen to just go to LFG and pick up three Guardian, or two other Guardians in this case, to get you set up, so that way you're able to figure out how to get the score max. A lot of people struggle with trying to... to get high scores because they just don't understand how those work and of course they don't also take advantage of the modifier so in this case you have the overcharge grenade launcher modifier strand surge voyage surge and uh, you're going to be dealing with overload and unstoppable champions so i went with a auto rifle with strand as part of my strand build to uh, stun the uh, overloads Fighting line does a ton of damage, it's still bugged, so on bosses and things like that, it'll do like a couple hundred thousand damage per shot, and it's also really strong against adds. And then, of course, uh, commemoration with four times a charm. And this is really key because when you go into your triumphs, you'll actually notice that for the Guardian games, you're going to actually have medals. And these are how you raise your score. The more you tick these boxes and more you do things to get you higher medals, and the gold, of course, are going to be the highest ones, these are going to be the medals that are going to get you the score that's going to put you over the top, so that way you get your 200k, 300k score. Uh, I was able to get uh, platinum with just doing a random match made team, and I was running around and just kind of taking care of most of the stuff by myself. And, of course, you can see platinum tiers achieved. And the one that I used the most was the Void Frenzy, because with the machine gun, you got a ton of ammo, you can kill a ton of ads in a short period of time. With the strand suspend build, it's actually really strong uh, as far as getting things to the point where you can always get your headshots, because then you can double up, and you can go from getting the Void Frenzy to then getting the Precision. And I'll show you here. And, of course, Stick and Move, which in this case you'll get 30 kills, and it'll keep, every time you get 30 kills, it'll keep resetting. So you'll get that as well. Heavy Spree, you'll get the same thing. Heavy Rampage, Heavy Frenzy, those will stack up. And then here's the Precision Spree, as you'll see, you get your Precision Sprees. You could even get Precision Rampage and Precision Frenzy if you're really careful. In my case, I was doing the Volatile uh, as well with the Volatile Flow, so a lot of stuff was dying before I could get Precision Kills. But it was still uh, strong because you would get a lot of score in a short period of time. You can clear out groups of ads, no problem. It's easy to get the Indestructible because things can't really touch you. Uh, same thing with the Jack of All Trades, as long as you're switching between your weapons quickly, you'll get the Jack of All Trades. And then with the Strand Adept, whenever you get the uh, rapidly uh, defeated kills from your Strand Explosions, like if you uh, are running, for me for example, with the Artifact, running th a Threaded Blast, that does a, a stronger, larger, more damaging explosion that'll actually knock out groups of 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 at times, so that's actually another good way to stack up your kills and specifically in today's nightfall which is the Neomuna nightfall uh, hypernet current and that's the one that you'll be seeing me today to get my 196 on uh, my build just to make sure that, that you guys understand what I'm working with here I've got 70 resilience because I'm running fawn of endurance so when I'm picking up an orb actually it's 100 resilience and then I'm getting as high of recovery and discipline as possible I'm using the necrotic grip with the uh, arcane Needle, so that when you throw out an Arcane Needle, everything starts to unravel. It also spreads your corruption, and so that in turn is going to lower the health of everything, making them prime for like a one-shot with your machine gun. So you just kind of start mowing through things, and then once they die, they'll let out a Suspending Blast, which will suspend everything around them, and you'll see me doing that plenty during the video. Also, try to use your super on groups of ads instead of one big thing because you'll be getting uh, medals for killing three or more things with one super. So that's another uh, strong way to increase your uh, ability to get score. And then, of course, that was just running Modularity Vanguard, so I was getting free uh, upgrade modules whenever I was doing the, the strike. Uh, now, going into the, the main portion of the build, I have things that are going to boost to the other stats, so I have class ability energy uh, generating when I do damage with the melee attack, which counts for all the things that get hit by the melee, and then I also have that feeding into my grenade. I don't have anything as far as like a grenade kickstarter or anything like that, because I kind of want to keep the uh, void weapon surge up, and so I'm running stacks on stacks with time dilation to try to keep that up so I get more damage out of my machine gun, that way I can mow through bosses and things. Another thing to take advantage of that 
it's hard to do when you're not in a uh, like a pre-made team, but you still kind of want to try it if you're quick enough. I try to get right up on the ads or, or the uh, the champions so that people can't kill them before I get this in. But there's the insult to injury. If you have your emote key bound where you can do an emote and then finish, that'll give you additional score, and then you get Giant Slayer on top of that. So you'll get finishing touches, insult to injury, and Giant Slayer every time that you finish a champion. And if, if you want to type in chat, hey, let me finish the champions, and you're set up to do so, then that way you can handle that for your team. And that'll be a way to also increase your score. That's how you, people are getting the 300k scores, is working together and coordinating who's finishing what, and making sure you're getting the insult to injury kills with that. Uh, from, well, from here, let's go back to the build. So uh, again, running Void Reserves, running Double Heavy to make sure I get Heavy Drop for me regularly, and on the Artifact, getting Untangler, Volatile Flow, Bricks from Beyond, because that'll help me spawn more ammo, not just for me, for my teammates. Allied Unraveling, so that way whenever we get uh, rapid final blows with my auto, I have Unraveling Rounds that I can kind of spray down and get that uh, Strand Precision Spree going. Counter Weave, that helps me get my abilities back once we stun champions, so there's plenty of that. And then of course we talked about Threaded Blast. Uh, with the weapons, I was going with Fort Time and Killing Tally with my Commemoration, so I was kind of keeping my Commemoration out as pretty much a primary. I was using the Perpetualis whenever I would run low or run out of ammo, and the Perpetualis itself is no joke, running Killing Wind and Golden Tricorn, it stacks up to times 2 whenever you get ability kills off of your Suspense. And then from there you just go to town mowing them as well. And then like I said, fighting line is currently bugged, so it hits big bosses for a ton of damage, takes large chunks off of their health, and so that's just like a nice little bonus on the boss to help get the boss through its phases and, and uh, lower your times, so that way you get a, a better time bonus too. Uh, from here I'm going to go ahead and talk a little bit through the strike as the first portion of the strike that way you can kind of see what I'm doing and then once I've kind of discussed all the main topics I'll let you see the strike through to the end. And so from here I'm going over the uh, modifiers so you can kind of see how they uh, affect. You just gotta pause it from there and you can kind of look through each one. Of course when you launch it yourself you'll be able to see it. Uh, my Broodweaver setup I've got Shack Grenade, of course Arcane Needle, Healing Rift, Thread of Fury, Thread of Warding, Thread of Mine and Thread of Generation with the two fragments that you can currently have access to. And this is just an overview of the build. Again, you can pause it if you'd like to see the build again, or you can refer back to the beginning of the video where we talked about the build. And I'm just kind of waiting for the launch in. So from here, uh, I like to run up and uh, take, eat my first grenade and start to get the Weaver's Trance, which is going to spread and blast the suspends targets with one kill. And I start out with the Centurions. And from there, I kind of try to make sure that they're cleared up because they do it hard with their Void Boomer. And then from there, I, I spread Thread and Needle, which is going to spread the corruption all the way up the ladder. And you can see we just mowed through the first group, and there's my first Heavy Rampage, Heavy Frenzy. So pretty much, again, making sure I use it like a primary, and try to keep the spree going. Of course, it's best if you don't die at all, but at least try to get your 30 in if you do <laughs> die. Make sure you're getting your 30 in. And now from here, here's the first Unstoppable. I should have gone up and finished him, but I, I was just too in, in the groove as far as getting the sprees, so I should have gone up and emoted and finished him, that would give me a higher score. And there's my first stick and move, as you can see, that's the 30. Same thing here, I should have moved up and finished him as well, but in that case that would have been a bad spot because of the location of the turrets, they probably would have moved me down. It's just a matter of cleaning up the turrets, trying to get to the boss area. And again, it's important to keep your arcane trance going. With this build will actually have quite a bit of overlap, so you should almost always have arcane trance, unless you just kind of mess it up, or you have to use your abilities in a short span of time to survive so you don't die. 
Like, for example, when we go over to this platform here, I'm usually not going to pop Arcane Trance because I'm going to try to save up my Shackle Grenade so that way I can stun the Unstoppable. Because that's my only way of killing Unstoppable with this particular build. I opted not to go with anything for Unstoppables, so that way I could fit in the uh, Alliance. So that way I can do damage to the boss. Because the fighting line itself is stronger than just about anything as far as on boss damage. So it's worth it waiting for my shock grenade. And then from here what I do now is I just get into position so that way I can get my arcane needle out there and try to get a group set up to where I can start spreading the corruption out. Here comes my shock grenade. Here I'm able to now get into a position where I can actually finish and get the Giant Slayer. As you can see, you get Giant Slayer and finishing touches. If my teammate wasn't there also shooting him, I would have definitely uh, been emoting, but since I'm in a match main, I don't know if these guys actually kind of know what's going on, which is the, the benefit of being in a, a pre-made if you decide to do LFGs. That way you can kind of say, hey, you know, let me make sure that I'm getting these done, or at least make sure you get your emote in before finishing. That way you can maximize your score. A ton of damage, this grand super. Getting nice little chunks off with the fighting line. Unfortunately, this particular boss is not as vulnerable to the fighting line, just because of the way his setup is. He's got that one crit spot, and you kind of have to catch him right in that for you to get the uh, fighting line bug. But it still does a nice chunk of his health. As you can see here, too, I get in here and I try to get the finish, but my teammates killed him before I can. So, you know, it's unfortunate, but that's just kind of how it is. You have to make sure that you're quick and you get in there and get that finish in. The next portal is clear. Let's follow those taken and remove them from the system. Hey, Guardian? I'm not sure just how much damage... And now as you can see here, I've got very little heavy ammo. So in this case, uh, I'm going to rely on my Perpetualis, especially when going up to the Overloads. Maybe getting rid of whatever is at the center of this will also help our Vex problem. Maybe. You know, from here I just want to make sure I try to protect everybody. I'm going to get down the shock grenade. That way he's stunned, getting ready to do the finish, which is good. And again, you can see I got a big chunk. I got the giant slayer and the finishing touches there. And again, if I would have been able to get an emote in if I had enough time, then it would have been even more. I think it was like it's closer to 10k if I remember correctly when you stack all three of those. You know, here's a little tricky because you have to get across and you also have to avoid getting hit by the, the light behind you and it'll sometimes go through this wall. So I just kind of timed it to make sure that I had a, another shot grenade ready. And here I'm just priming him to get the finish. Again, if I didn't have my teammate there also shooting him, I would have been able to get an emote and get a finish. That's kind of one of the downsides of tr trying to do this in a match made, is just that, you know, you can't predict them, because all of a sudden, they're not shooting, they're not shooting, and then right when you get <laughs> close to killing them, here they come and they start shooting. As you can see here, this is where Threaded Needle really shines. Like, everything gets lifted up into the air, and then I got my primary and precision spree. And now I'm going to go and I'm going to start doing the same thing with my heavy, so I'm going to get my heavy spree, demo expert, void spree, heavy rampage, and we just got to the silver threshold, as you can see there. Now here's a little also tougher part to do when you have just randoms with you because they don't always drive appropriately. Like this guy in front of me, for example, he is in the lead, but he's not gunning it, so like he keeps kind of slowing down, which was making me nervous, and you can kind of tell that I like slowing down behind him because I don't want to bump him off, and I don't want to bump myself off. And while you do, uh, I think, still get points for resing, I wouldn't be anywhere near him to be res. It put me all the way back at the prior starting point of the sparrow portion.
Yeah, there's a good example there, our teammate pretty much right on cue. As you can see, I, I kind of got a little tired of him being slow like that, so I took the inside lane and passed him up without bumping him off. And this is kind of the last section that I wanted to talk about was the uh, overloads. So with the overloads, you kind of have to stun them, you have to get up in them, hit them with your shackle grenade. And see there, I'm kind of frustrated because he killed him <laughs> and it cost us quite a bit of points. So now I'm having to be a little bit more aggressive and I'm going to have to like almost get myself killed by these two hobgoblins just to get into position ahead of him so that way I can actually get these kills. And there I'm dodging the retributive strike. So now I see that he's, he's cooking him, I get up in there and I get to finish him before he actually can finish him off with the... Beam. I think he ran out of it, thank goodness. And from here, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys watch the rest from here. The strategy is pretty much the same. And as you can see, that I'm always just trying to max out my machine gun kills, especially when I have a good chance at a bunch of adds. I'm throwing off my super in a situation where that super will be able to get multiple kills, or you can see the Let There Be Light medal from that. And I'm always looking for opportunities to get multi kills, precision kills, and sprees with my heavy. That way I can kind of maximize our score. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised, I don't think I checked at the end of this video, but I wouldn't be surprised if I had like maybe like 140k of this score all by myself <laughs> out of this 190k. Uh, I had quite a bit of, of the finishes for us, and I think maybe even all of them, and I had quite a bit of these moments where I'm getting these crazy primary sprees, these crazy heavy sprees, just so that I can keep us up. And I, and I have to, again, continually work against my teammates, because when I get them low like that, as you can see, he just kills him. And if otherwise, I could have jumped up there early when he was half health, but then that also puts me in a bad position to get killed as well, if they're not actually helping me in now by myself with a little bit of heavy ammo. So it's a little bit of a balancing act. Uh, but from here, I, I'm going to let you guys enjoy the rest. You can kind of see how I handled the big ad situation at the boss room, and also how much damage the fighting line does. If you have any questions, of course, you can always leave me a comment in the video. And I'll be able to answer some questions if you have some loadout questions or if you have questions about other classes and what I would do if I was running another class. Uh, but other than that, enjoy the rest of the video. You guys have a good day and uh, get a good luck in getting your platinum scores. This is the access point. Let's get rid of that Taken before it opens a path into the Cloud Arc.
taken or cleared out. You're looking for the Checking now. All done, all done. Welcome back. Good luck. Come here and let me look at you. It's just wonderful to be back. I missed you all so much. Thank you,